Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a domain Zur Eternal Schemer deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. Zur is a 3 mana 1 4 legendary human wizard with flying, saying enchantment creatures we control have death touch, lifelink, and hexproof. And for 1 and a white, target non aura enchantment we control becomes a creature in addition to its other types, and its base, power, and toughness are each equal to its mana value. So Zur can animate our enchantments, turning them into creatures, and for as long as we control Zur, they will also have Death Touch, a Life Link, and Hexproof. So this is going to be the main win condition in our deck. At some point late in the game, we'll play Zur, activate it once or twice, animating our enchantments to start beating down the opponent. And the main enchantment that combines very nicely with our Eternal Schemer is a Leyline Binding, a 6-mana enchantment with Flash that when it enters the battlefield can exile targets a non-land permanent an opponent controls until a Leyline Binding leaves the battlefield, so a nice instant speed removal spell, and thanks to Domain it gets a 1 mana discount for each basic land type among lands we control, basic land types being Plains, Island, Swamp, Mountain and Forest. And our deck is playing a whole bunch of these tri-lands from Streets of New Capenna, and as you'll notice, they have the Plains, Island, and Swamp subtype in case of a Rafine's Tower. So all these tri-lands have a ton of basic land types, which means that if we play them early, we can easily discount our binding down to a single white mana if we have all five basic land types in play, which can happen as early as turn two in this deck, which is pretty crazy. And then once we have our six mana Leyline Binding in play, we can animate it with a Zur and turn it into a 6-6 with Death Touch, a Life Link, and Hexproof, and it kind of feels like our enchantment has haste most of the time, as it will already be in play by the time we play Zur, so we can activate it and attack with the enchantment right away and swing the race back in our favor, or maybe finish off our opponent on the spot. So that's our main game plan. Other domain payoffs include Drag to the bottom, a sorcery giving all creatures minus X minus X until end of turn, where X is 1 plus the number of basic land types among the lands we control. So if we have all 5 types, can give minus 6 minus 6 until end of turn. So a nice sweeper to potentially catch us back up, as in the early turns we're going to be pretty slow out of the gates playing all of these tap lands. And then we also have two copies of Jodas Codex, a 5-mana artifact, we pay 5-mana, tap it, and draw a card, but it also gets a 1-mana discount for each basic land type, so if we have all 5 in play, we can activate Codex for free just by tapping it to draw a card, so it turns into an amazing card draw engine. And we can even search it up with our second chapter of Cruelty of Gigs, which can also take a look at the opponent's hand to take away a creature or planeswalker on chapter 1, but we can read ahead if the opponent's empty-handed, for instance, and search up any card in our deck at the cost of 3 life, eventually also reanimating a creature with a final chapter. So Cruelty can also be a way to find a Zur if we need a finisher, or maybe find Codex in the more grindy matchups, can also find a cheap removal spell if that's what we need. So just a pretty flexible enchantment, even though it will eventually go away, so maybe not the best to animate with Azur unless we desperately need a creature to gain some life with. And then uh, taking a look at the rest of our deck, we've got some cheap removal spells that can exile opposing creatures, which is pretty useful when facing decks like Mono Black that have access to the Tenacious Underdog, which can keep coming back from the graveyard, so being able to exile it will prevent that from happening. So we've got Circle of Confinement to answer cheap creatures, Borrow Time can hit any non-land permanent, and Touch the Spirit Realm as a two-off can deal with creatures and artifacts, but can also be channeled for one and a white to potentially flicker a creature or artifact, so it can be used to maybe kill opposing tokens for just two mana, can also flicker our own Spirited Companion to draw an extra card, a two mana 1-1 one -one that draws when it enters, also lines up nicely against Liliana of the Veil's minus two ability. And then we only have a one-off Meat Hook Massacre, since we're already playing a four drank to the bottom, as just a one-off we can potentially search up with Cruelty if we desperately need a bigger sweeper or maybe something that can also gain life when it kills opposing creatures. And then we also have the full set of Wedding Announcement as another nice source of card advantage if we can get a few tokens going and maybe attack with them. Otherwise, the tokens will also help us buy time, eventually transforming into Wedding Festivity, which can also pump up our team, so it plays nicely alongside Azur once we start animating our enchantments, potentially the festivity itself as well. And yeah, as we mentioned, our mana base has a ton of these tri-lands. We're base Esper colors, so those are the most important ones we need to cover. So certainly playing for Rafine's Tower, 
And then the rest of the tri lands you can mix and match depending on which ones you have. I'm playing 4 Lounge, 2 Proving Ground, 2 Garden and 2 Headquarters. Just make sure you have enough of these to enable your domain synergies. Now of course these will come into play tapped, which slows down our early game, but for the most part we're happy just playing a slow controlling game and eventually catch back up with a drag to the bottom if we're up against an aggressive deck so it doesn't hurt us too much. And then late game these can also be cycled, which is useful if we need to find more action. And then a Shattered Sanctum, also kind of a necessary evil to make sure we have enough white and black mana since we need white early as well as double black for cards like Drag to the Bottom and Cruelty. So despite Sanctum not having any basic client types for domain, we're still playing the full set. And then three Swamps and four Planes to potentially cast our two drops on Curve. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play and our hand does need to draw a few lands, but Companion helps. Can always flicker companion just to draw if we don't have anything else going on. And then drag to the bottom will be a nice catch-up mechanism. Opponent on a blue deck. It's gonna consider. With a negate in the graveyard. Sander Slounge is not bad. Put on blue black. Alright, we'll hit for one, and then we might end up uh, channeling Touch the Spirit Realm. Opponent with a Liliana of the Veil, yeah. We'll see if they decide to plus or minus. No more distractions. It's gonna minus two, so this is perfect. Can save our companion. Comes back, draws a card, and can finish off Liliana. Got a whole story arc there. And might as well play another. And play... I guess we want extra black mana, potentially. Shieldred, we can... Try to answer now with a Leyline Binding, I suppose. Otherwise, drag to the bottom uh, would have worked as soon as we played Headquarters, as we now have the full domain. But um, yeah, one mana Leyline Binding sounds good. Now, drag to the bottom could still be the better play, since Leyline's much more flexible. Although it does mean giving up on Double Companion. Close call. Don't really want to play Zur until we can activate it right away, so we can maybe turn on our Leyline Binding. So, quite a few options. I think we will uh, hit for two and then drag to the bottom. Opponent takes it. Next one we can just play our Cruelty. Check out their hand. While their opponent is playing Negate, which could counter our Saga. Uh, they're gonna pilfer. Can take any of our cards. Probably takes cruelty. Nope, takes Zur. That's surprising. Well, we'll check out their hands starting from chapter one. Take Shieldred. And then Silver Scrutiny is the biggest problem card here. And a Jin. Okay, they have a negate for protection. But we can search up plenty of cheap answers. Like another Leyline Binding. That might be the pick. Although I have a lot of removal in hand, so I'm not really concerned about the gen here. So we can go Borrowed Time if they counter Binding. So maybe I just want to get a Codex for card advantage. So we'll borrow time. Put on the gates. And then now resolve binding. So Jin is gone. And then next turn we can play our codex and draw without having to pay any mana. Opponent's probably gonna draw with scrutiny. Which they'll have to main phase if they wanna sink all their mana into it. 
So your opponent's got a full grip, but blue-black will struggle to answer a resolved artifact. And we can get back either Zur or Shieldred. Shieldred sounds fun. Especially alongside Codex. Can maybe hit our land drop. Okay. So point will have to answer their own Shieldred. Hopefully they don't have a way to bounce it, otherwise they'll get it back. It's gonna be a Liliana to make a sacrifice. That's acceptable. When I win, you're telling me what you about. <laughs> Off you go. And their own shieldred. Okay, so what's my plan here? I can leyline binding shieldred, play another cruelty. Yeah, that's probably the play. Should have put a stop on upkeep. Announcement's also tempting, but I think we want to resolve Cruelty while they don't have Negate mana up. And then just uh, an Infernal Grasp and a couple lanes. Probably still fine to play Proving Ground instead of cycling it. Can discard a Circle to Liliana. I'm tired of your secrets. Okay, get to search up another Codex. And try and cast it, maybe draw first. Alright, so we're drawing three cards per turn now. Could play Meat Hook Massacre for zero to play around Invoke Despair, so we get to keep our cruelty. But our opponent concedes, yeah, double codex, too much value. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hand is acceptable. Got uh, four out of five lands for domain. And then double companion to draw. Cruelty to maybe find Zur at some point. Opponent with a turn on Delver. Okay, might have to circle of confinement that. And we could struggle against a low curve counter spell deck. If they can protect their one cheap threat. But the uh, flash on Leyline Binding can also come in handy. That resolved pretty swiftly. And a Storm Chaser Drake, we're also happy to exile. And then now we can even play a 1 mana binding. So yeah, we'll go with a Circle of Confinement. Might see Hexproof and Response. Or slip out the back. And then we'll binding. Take care of that problem. Now we're out of removal and they've got another Drake. But there's Zur to animate our binding, so that can close out the game very quickly. We'll try Companion first. Since I would prefer to play Zur and activate it in the same turn. Assassin's Capture, even a combo with Drake here, so that's pretty neat. But now Zur has a better chance of resolving. Meat Hook Massacre can also deal with Drake. But not before they draw a few more cards. Double combat research, opponent's going off. <laughs> Triple, okay. Well, if they have another slip out the back or any counterspell really, we're in trouble. Opponent's living the dream over there. Six cards in hand. Ooh, a one mana binding, that's a big deal. Okay, so I can try and bait out a counterspell with the Zur and then maybe resolve Binding. It's probably my best bet, since Massacre for 2 would tap us out. 
Uh, that resolves. And we have a chance of racing Drake with Zer if we animate our current binding. Don't think the one in hand is likely to resolve. Zer can also block Drake, so they need to find an answer to it. If they were to play a bypass, I can exile the bypass itself instead of the Drake. Alright, Soaring City, that'll work. So I guess we want a binding as soon as the Drake attacks. And then if they slip out to back, at least they don't hit me. Hope they don't have a different answer here. Spell Pierce, that's painful. Okay, at least they're mostly tapped out. So we can probably resolve Zer. And another one mana binding. Okay. So I guess we'll main phase binding to play around Spell Pierce. Although if they slip out to back, I would prefer to cast this in the opponent's turn, but at this point, just have to try binding and uh, cross our fingers. All right, slip out to back. So they had all the answers, but not too surprising when drawing four cards per turn. And now the Drake can even attack past Zur. So our only chance is just untapping with the Zur, animating double binding, and out racing the Drake, which is still a real possibility. They need to find bounce spells. Another combat research, so they've got all four. And Drake attacks, we'll take it down to 11. Opponent draws three. Pretty ridiculous. So yeah, gotta hope there's no fading hopes to bounce Zer. And yeah, we got to untap. So we'll activate twice here. Don't know if I want to attack with Spirited Companion in case they were slow rolling a bounce spell on Zer. So I'll just send the bindings. Not sure up to untap the Drake. They could also chum block and slip out the bank, but nope. Opponent falls to 6, we gain 12. And yeah, we still have a game on our hands, despite our opponent doing exactly what they wanted to do. Delver of Secrets is acceptable. Probably not gonna resolve Meat Massacre to wipe those up. But we can try. Still hoping to dodge a Fading Hope on Zur, which would also remove the lifelink. Putting somehow down to four cards in hand, but they're probably about to draw three more. Another Drake. Opponent's down to just a single blue mana. So this Meat Hook Massacre for one is uh, very likely to resolve. Okay, this is gonna be pretty brutal. Can pay for Spell Pierce. Sadly, we will have to sacrifice our Spirited Companion here. But our opponent explodes. Wow, what a game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems fine. Plenty of removal. So don't mind seeing a turn one Evolved Sleeper. Drag to the bottom will be our catch-up mechanism. And a turn to Underdog. That's a type of card we wouldn't mind exiling, and we can do so with a Leyline Binding. Even for one mana here, just double checking my land types. So yeah, that should do it, and might as well do it now. That's the power of the tri lands with Leyline Binding. Now we won't be able to answer Liliana of the Veil, which is what our opponent has here. 
since touch only gets rid of artifacts or creatures and not planeswalkers. But that's okay, we'll find an answer eventually. For now, can get rid of lounge. Next turn, play a companion, which lines up quite well. So now I'm not sure if I want to hang on to touch the spirit realm, in case there's another underdog, maybe. Cruelty can try and find an answer for Liliana, although they're close to an ultimate, so that's definitely a concern. Could also channel to flicker companion draw card. I cannot do that on the leyline binding. Although maybe we can actually pressure Liliana with our companion to delay an ultimate. In which case, I'll get rid of drag. Opponent also holding cruelty. Sleeper hits us for one. Might level up here. It's gonna be a graveyard trespasser. Okay. So, I guess I could touch a spirit realm trespasser, hit Liliana for one. Although Liliana making us discard once again is going to make it so we can't actually be guaranteed a turn 5 cruelty. What happens if I just touch the Spirit Realm on Evolve Sleeper, for instance? Then Liliana goes up to 6, next turn I cruelty, and then Liliana can ultimate. So I think we do want to get rid of the Trespasser here. And hope to draw an answer to Liliana. Borrow time would work. Another Leyline Binding. Small chance they minus two Liliana, which would be fine by me. Especially if our opponent has two spells in hand if they don't want to discard. If our opponent does plus, I think I have to get rid of Cruelty. Since it would be a disaster if we keep Cruelty and then don't draw an untapped land to cast it. And then discard it again next turn. At least now we can top deck most spells and cast them, like this wedding announcement. And that's also going to help us pressure Liliana. Opponent discarded Meathook Massacre, so they're Liliana plus, while effective against us, also making them discard. Which is why Liliana is much better in a more low-curve build. But her opponent's still playing Cruelty and Massacre, so it looks more mid-rangey. Sleeper now a 3-3, can start drawing. It's gonna be a Massacre for one. Okay, that's not bad. And then we'll have to discard, but now in ultimate range, so we need to top deck, otherwise... We're gonna see an ultimate next turn, and that's quite the top deck. Animate Leyline Binding, kill Liliana. Oof. So, yeah, we had quite a few outs, but still happy to find one here. Azur did it, we had three bindings, four borrowed times, and maybe a couple others that I can't think of right now. But our opponent explodes, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's promising, although missing white mana. And we have a lot of white sources in the deck. We're on the draw. I'll try it. We'll be able to play Binding for pretty cheap. And now drag to the bottom can maybe catch us back up if we're behind. Opponent considers on turn one. At least we're not under any immediate pressure. So we can slowly hit our land drops here. Opponent's got the Haughty Gin plus a counterspell backup. 
And we finally found a white mana. So, a drank to the bottom would kill Jin. Although, a drank to the bottom I can maybe combine with a Leyline Binding to get rid of the Jin when we're stuck on single white. Whereas that's not necessarily true if I want to try and double spell two of my white removal spells. So maybe we should go with like a borrowed time here. Or I guess on the off chance our opponent has a make disappear. Instead of a negate circle we can pay for make disappear. Sure. So they need negates or maybe a slip out to back type effect. Right, fading hope to bounce it. That's fine at least. They need to recast it now. And then... Now a borrow time could work as well. Can still pay for syncope at x equals 2. Right, fading hope once again. If we find an untapped land, I can drag to the bottom, plus Leyline Binding. We'll see how that works out. Alright, more Leyline Bindings instead. Well, if that's the case, maybe touch a Spirit Realm now, keep the Instant Speed Binding for later. Alright, wash away finally a hard counter. So Jin can start attacking. But we're not done trying to answer it here. Another Jin. Okay, drank to the bottom. Looking better and better. Although, opponent could have either syncopate for two or make disappear to counter it. So we might want to bait one of those out with leyline binding. And then next turn we can potentially get both Jins with a drank to the bottom. So I'll cast a Leyline Binding in their upkeep. So they can draw into an answer, but if they have an answer, they'll be forced to tap their mana right now. Alright, negate, so they had a clean answer here. Okay. And then now we can cast a double binding and drag to the bottom. So maybe start with Binding, and then uh, drag to the bottom afterwards, assuming they counter this, they might let it go, since one gen could be enough to cross the finish line. They're definitely thinking about it, and if their last two cards are both counter spells, we could be in trouble. Right, syncopate, opponent's got only a single blue left. So, do we pay five? I guess I could pay five. And then, uh, resolve binding. What I should have done was maybe cast another binding before syncopate resolved. Then if they don't counter it, just pay for syncopate, exile both creatures. If they did counter the second binding, then just drag to the bottom instead. Now I have to make this decision without perfect information. Yeah, I guess we decline and just drag to the bottom. Although why wouldn't they syncopate for six? They need to have another answer in hand. At which point, I guess both gins are lethal here. One syncopate hits the graveyard. So it's unlikely that drag to the bottom resolves. If they have a negate left, but maybe it's just another syncopate and we can actually pay for it. They could maybe cast a make disappear with casualty, but then binding will still answer the second gin. Alright, that worked. And we still have a binding in hand. So mission accomplished. Double gin answered. And now cruelty, we can afford to pay some life. Don't think Cruelty is going to resolve, but if it does, do we start on Chapter 1? I think so. Ok, 
can have a look at their hand and I'm not in a hurry to cast whatever I search up. Okay, opponent's got a Lencher Shredder as another threat that we can answer with Circle of Confinement and potentially fight over it. Meetuk Massacre for three would not be enough if they put a counter on it. So that works. So we're waiting until we find Zur to animate our enchantments. There he is. Opponent can sink bait for seven. So I won't be able to pay for it. Maybe I should wait until I find two threats I want to resolve in the same turn. That way a syncopate won't be as effective since we'll likely resolve one of the two. So wait until we pick up maybe like a wedding announcement. Or some other threats. Companion, I guess, counts. That resolves. Can start dealing one each turn, and the codex is quite nice as well. So that's most likely getting countered, so we might want to double spell it with Azur next turn. Can also use channel to draw with companion once again, but probably happy to keep it as removal. Opponent's digging towards another Jin. We'll take our draw step, attack for one, and see if Codex resolves, or would we rather resolve Codex and get Zur countered? I mean, they're both pretty much game winners. And I guess casting the cheaper spell first makes it more awkward if they have a Syncopate-like effect in hand. Alright, Syncopate for six, and then we'll see if they have another leftover counter spell for Codex. They did spell pierce, ouch. Okay, so that did not quite pan out, but our opponent's on empty, and we're beating down with a companion. We can cast every spell we draw at this point. We can probably answer all the opponent's remaining creatures in their deck. So 17 more turns. Haughty Jin shows up. That's not gonna stick around. I want to use Touch the Spirit Realm as opposed to Binding, so we can keep the instant speed answer for later. Could also drag to the bottom, honestly. Although then we lose our threat. But we're not gonna have many uses for drag otherwise. Alright, fine. Maybe make them counter this and then resolve Touch the Spirit Realm. That works for me. Meetuk Massacre for four would be a little risky. Since, yeah, then we would be tapped out, so that doesn't work. Alright, Jin exiled. And then good to have Binding available in case they have another Soaring City to maybe bounce my enchantment and get the Jin back at instant speed. So yeah, Wedding Announcement, Zur, another Codex would all be great draws. Can Cycle Lounge. Cycle Garden. Got a few of those left. And head for one. Yeah, I think our deck has probably more answers to the opponent's creatures than they have counter spells. So it's just a matter of making sure the opponent can't tempo us out and uh, kind of choke us on mana in a way. It's 
It's gonna be another negate. Yep. So there is not too many negates left, maybe one. Our clock has doubled. So five more turns. Can cycle and cycle. attack. Okay, three more turns. Plenty of removal in hand. Opponent goes digging with impulse. They might have one gin left. Maybe some other creature like Ledger Shredder. Right, Thirst. So they're seeing quite a few cards now. And the Delver of Secrets. That doesn't really worry me when we have double circle in hand. And a codex to boot. Wanna make sure we answer Delver first. They're gonna bounce it, that's fine. Does codex resolve? It does not. Another thirsts. Discarding Fading Hope Spell Pierce. And another Impulse. And there's a final Djinn. One unknown in hand, so I think we've got this one covered. Another Delver. Okay. So a good double binding end of turn here. Sure. Since we have lethal, if we attack for two, and then Meadog Massacre, it's kind of a cruel way to end it, killing our own companions, but... Don't want to give my opponent an extra draw step if I can help it. Okay. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems fine. Turn one Epicure, opponent uh, red black sacrifice deck. Hoping for another tri land here to discount binding even more. And that's going to be a potential answer to Anvil. Point taking quite a bit of damage off Sulphur Springs to play Harvester. And this drag to the bottom is going to be our catch-up mechanism. Next turn Companion can chum block if needed. And then double binding to go with Azur. Fable's not bad. So we could also just binding the fable right now. Um, is that better? Yeah, I guess that's okay. Since um, plan next turns to wipe the board, and then we won't have to answer the reflection later. are down to eight. And there's the anvil. All right, so that we will binding as well, although there's a second anvil. That's gonna add up very quickly. So we could be in a bit of trouble now. They can activate anvil on the token here. And they have a couple blood tokens to kickstart Anvil once again. 
synthesizer for card draw. Finds bargain, another nice draw two effect. Kind of surprised they sacked synthesizer here, but they got lucky and exiled the land. Okay, so yeah, we need to leyline binding one of the anvils. And then I can circle of confinement or companion. Probably go for companion. Might have wanted to play that before my land. In case we found another tri land that discounted binding. Now they could also sack anvil to another anvil, but then we're less concerned about binding potentially getting answered once we animate it with Xur. Or they can sack it to itself, that also works. Okay, so facing a pair of one ones and an anvil at six life. So we need another answer to anvil, and there's a third one. And double anvil probably kills us here. Alright, that was too bad. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems acceptable. Don't really want double Zur in our opening hand, but uh, it's likely to get removed, so we'll have a backup. And then we're a bit slow to get going, but at least we have the full domain unlocked. Put on blue white. Do I want to play a turn 2 companion? Sure, why not? And then I might end up cycling the tower here, for instance. Well, we can play one mana binding now. Bone's got a wedding announcement, we'll exile it before it gets a chance to trigger. Then attack for one. Blazer. And uh, I guess another tower since we already have full domain. Probably wanted to play Zer before attacking to game one. That's okay. Alright, so we could animate Leyline Binding here and hit for six. Do have to watch out for potential sweepers. Opponent hanging on to 4 mana. I think it's still worth it. If they have a Wandering Emperor, Binding will have Hexproof. So I can just leave Zer back. Who would destroy evil. Well, we can just animate again in response. So it gains Hexproof. Alright, another destroy evil. Fair enough. So our opponent's having none of it. And then now I guess I'll attack. If they want to exile Zer, we have another one. And Binding will be able to take care of Announcement once again. Another Binding's excellent. Okay, let's keep as much white mana untapped as possible. Get rid of Bankbuster. And announcement. And then just Zer attacking. And then I might actually use binding on the token just so we have a 6-6. Six -six to animate, and if the opponent answers it, then uh, we're not too sad, because the opponent won't get anything back. So that's gone. If they want to kill Zur now before we can activate it, that's fine too. Opponent lets us untap. 
Okay. Can do this three times. But twice should be enough. And I'll keep Zur untapped in case of a Wandering Emperor now. Alright, Soaring City. Do I animate my 3 3? Seems a bit risky for a point as a board wipe. So now we have to watch out for removal on Leyline Binding. Opponent plays a land and explodes. Okay, so Leyline Binding gets it done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is slow to get going, but double announcements promising, so I'll try it. Best case scenario, draw another tri lands next turn, but I'll take a swamp. Put on mono black. No turn to underdog. Play announcements. And then next turn might play another one. Lines up favorably against a potential Liliana of the Veil. And Infernal Grasp, my 1 1 token. Miss your land drop. Opponent's in trouble. Now they could have a Meatwick Massacre to catch back up, although they use Infernal Grasp on a 1 1. That seems sort of unlikely. Trespasser can help them block. Now we could exile it and pay the ward tax. Or we can just play a Spirited Companion and then uh, next turn maybe play Zur and activate. So Massacre for two would potentially save them. Alright, there it is. So they had the answer. Now we still have Zur plus Leyline Binding, which is going to be pretty strong. Okay. So don't want to play Zur just yet, since we want to be able to potentially activate it right away and animate a Leyline Binding. So I can pass. Wait and see what they play next. Although I might just binding the trespasser. And then next turn Plazer and I can activate it twice potentially. If we keep uh, land in hand. Do we have enough white mana? I guess we might be short on white mana to activate it twice. So if we can only activate it once, plan is to animate binding. And then I'm fine discarding swamp to trespasser. And I guess we want to keep it daytime. So I should do this now, or we could go for a borrowed time instead. And then maybe flash and binding on the opponent's next play. Okay. And then we've got double festivity, pumping our team by two, and shielder is perfect to exile with our binding. We'll play Zert. Turn this on. And smash for 11, gaining 8. Probably fine to keep headquarters in hand to maybe cycle. And we're insulated against a potential Invoke Despair. Can sack the token, sack an enchantment. And then our opponent should be dead next turn. Meadook Massacre doesn't do it. And there's Invoke Despair, so Sack Token. Sack Enchantments. And we can animate another Festivity here if we want to. Could animate Borrowed Time. Just because. Awesome. So they had the Massacre to catch back up, but Zur closing out the game very quickly here. Alright, so we got to see our Esper Zur deck in action, and yeah, the domain synergies are quite impressive, especially getting to cast a 1-mana Leyline Binding as early as turn 2, and the uh, Codex also performed quite nicely in the grindier matchups. 
So pretty happy with a domain package alongside Azure and then of course being able to close out the game out of nowhere by just playing a three mana creature is pretty nice in an otherwise very controlling deck with plenty of exile effects which are important when facing decks like mono black having those answers to underdog as well as plenty of answers to artifacts and planeswalkers which are important to have against the mono black menace so that's going to do it for today's gameplay I want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.